Okay, well, what would what would be our like best tips for traveling with kids? Oh, best tips? Mm-hmm. What well, we might disagree on this though. My, My tip is. is I always bring a backpack that's partially empty, oh, and this is actually gosh. can I say a pet peeve of sometimes when is we it fly? Me? Yeah, it's, it's you. Me. Tori has all these loose ends. I watch these videos. Of these girl, like this mom, saying, "Look what I we do to pack for this trip." Or get, I'm like, stop it. Remember that one time I put Josiah on? We're in the back of the plane. And they heard it. They all heard Josiah screaming. I'm like, guys, I need to get off. All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode. That sounded really boring, though. Like, I got a little more energy. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Raising Heights with Zach and Tori. I'm Zach. And I'm Tori. Thank you guys for being here. We're happy you're here and listening and learning a little bit more about us. I know. This Um, has been a crazy... Can we, like, we have not acknowledged this yet. Guys, you hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube and that's an honor. Like, that's so cool. That happened pretty quick too, right? Stay humble. Stay humble, roll off. <laughs> but that was way, way cool to like, yeah, yeah 100,000 kind of people choose to hang out with us. That's just kind of wild. We're going to get a cute little plaque. I know. We'll have to do something with it. Yeah. Who knows if it'll ever show up. I'm still in like denial that it's happening. Yeah. Don't have to apply for it. I did. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. So who knows? That's. But we just want to say thank you to all of you who choose to hang out, listen, subscribe, download all the things like we're just really grateful that y'all are here and wanting to hang out yeah love it zach's gonna hold the mic closer today so that our team has an easier time (laughs) putting it all together and i'm gonna hold mine further away um (laughs) all right peak and pit what's your peak um i have not addressed this on our podcast yet but my peak this week has really been bridgerton (laughs) <laughs> that's been my peak this week i'm a little obsessed you're listening she listens to the books all day yeah she i has her little headphones in i fell in love i've like watched all all of the series but it wasn't really until season three that i actually cared because yeah. i love nicola Coughlin. i just think she's the i just love her yeah. and so then i kind of became obsessed with season three we don't need to talk about part two, but just part one. But then yeah. I started reading the books, and now I'm like, I'm obsessed with all of them. I The books are so good. I'm going to describe a scene. They're a little spicy. Not that. Oh, what? In Pirates of the Caribbean, when like the captain is walking down the ship, the the, the you know the deck, and the whole ship is exploding behind oh, him. Oh, yeah. And he's just, you know, <laughs> that's Tori lately. She has her headphones in. <laughs> The house is okay. just exploding. Yeah, and there's, there's just chaos behind her. Everyone's talking to her, and she can't hear anyone. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> so that's been our house the last couple of days. But it's it's put me in such a good mood. It's oh, just such like, a good mood. It's just the books are so the I mean bless it. The series is still good, and you should still watch it on Netflix. But like the books are so much better. They're so good. What was your pit? My pit. Hmm. We are leaving on a nine-day trip tomorrow, two days from today, and packing, getting organized, just all of that has been a pit. Your pit didn't have anything to do with me. What's your, what did you do? I don't know. Just curious. What did you do this (laughs) week? Wait, remind me. What did you do? (laughs) I didn't live up to your book boyfriend's expectations. Oh, stop it. Oh, get out of here. You're way better. Oh, dear. (laughs) I send Tori funny reels all the time. Of They make funny little jokes about these book boyfriends. <laughs> I shared one the other day, like how depressing it is when you have to say goodbye yeah. to your fictional character. Yeah. So anyway. Um, what was your pit? Uh, my pit. I don't, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. Or little things, little things. Setting up, we're getting ready for DAAA still. Yeah. Little hiccups have come up, which aren't like pits, but, you know, it's just all the things of planning a big event for a lot of people. I put a lot of expectations on it, on myself, mm-hmm. and I want things to be perfect. Yeah. And 
um, you know, little things come up that are out of your control or you missed or something like that. So, but it's not like a pit. It's just, yeah. you know, it's part of planning an event. Yeah. Um, and it's not just me. This, you know, the whole team, the whole board, but there's some things under my jurisdiction that haven't mm-hmm. quite gone exactly to plan but it, they can still go to plan yeah but it's just getting it's just like getting up. there i feel like the whole yeah. like just until we get there it's a pit like yeah. everything up to it it's just like you know uh um, stressful peak i'm gonna say it yeah a, did i miss something big oh, yeah gosh, what? i think the family that <gasps> used to live here i was gonna talk about that but yeah. i wasn't sure if you wanted no, to okay family. that's actually the peak there yeah, say was tell them what happened a lot of fun the family, we, during our restoration, not our remodel, if you're following along, our restoration <laughs> project, okay, when our house flooded, during the flooring, they took out the... Um, the, the built-ins. The built-ins in the, closet. in the closet. And in Lila's, a picture was behind it. And it was... And uh, I... We don't have to get too personal, but it was, a, it was a very sentimental picture. It was like a photo that I was like, this kind of seems... I, I, I followed, or I didn't follow, but I had found the in-law of the people who lived here. And so I had reached out and said, Hey, do you want me to send this photo to yeah. these people? And they said, yes. And then I am a dumb dumb and forgot to send it, send chaos. it. But like, honestly, it was the best thing ever because, because I didn't send it to them. They ended up coming to our house well, well, to they, pick it up. They were visiting. So two yeah. months later, oh, yeah, that's true. They they're didn't visiting and then they reached out and said, Hey, we're in town. Can we come, Can we pick come up? by and like pick up that picture? It was a, it was a family. Yes. It was a moment that one of the kids had. It was a very sentimental picture. Yeah. So it, uh, it wasn't like weird. It, it, it was, was totally understood normal. that they yeah. wanted it. Um, but yeah, they came with all their kids yeah. and like walked around the property and like they were super stoked. And like how it. often does that happen that you can yeah. go back and visit the house that you sold to somebody? Yeah. All the kids were like, like the kid oldest was 16 yeah. and they had six kids and they were just so, they were, they were so excited kind. about it. They were so like, like, I mean, it, we look back on that whole, I, and I kept telling the woman who was here, I kept telling her like, we're so grateful that you chose us. It was fun seeing like, they're a little older now. It's been three or four years, but this was kind of one of their childhood homes for yeah. five years. And, and then just talking to the mom and dad too, the dad was yeah. telling me like, Hey, just know that you don't talk about these things when you're buying the when house. When you're selling a house or, or buying selling it, the yeah. house. But he's like, Hey, there's a drain pipe right here. Just know yeah. that. Like, telling if you, ever... you like all the ins and outs of where stuff is. Yeah. Like, Hey, there's going to be a drain pipe right here too. If you ever dig up this ground, know that there's a pipe in here. And like, um, and I think he was just stoked to see that the property was super yeah. used and we peeled the and shop. And he finished a lot of his stuff. Yeah. He yeah. had some unfinished things, the tree house. Yeah. Anyway, that was my peak. I thought That's that was a lot of fun. That's such a good one, babe. It was yeah. so fun. That's such a cool, unique experience to have the previous owners come in and yeah. see. And well, it's one yeah. of those situations where, like, we met them in the process of buying the house. We met her. We met her. I, I met think... him too. Oh, okay. I never met him. Uh, uh, it's one of those situations where there are certain people that you're like, okay, I'm never going to see these people again. They're moving across the country. Yeah. You know, you just, it crosses out of your mind. Yeah. And then, you know, three, four years later. When they come back in. And just how stoked they were about it. So They were so nice. That's such a peak. That was yeah. a good one, babe. So anyway, that was um, where, where are we going today? Where are we going? Where are we going in two days? We have, we what? have some travel coming up. So we thought this could be kind of a fun episode to talk about traveling with toddlers and all things that have worked for us, but have also failed for us. So we thought we'd dive in a little bit to traveling with kids what has worked for us there's been a lot that has worked for us and a lot that hasn't and every single kid is different which makes it so hard because you know we started with jackson who we say this a lot on our podcast which maybe we shouldn't but he was like so easy as a kid and i can remember doing a tlc event and they flew us first class to atlanta Jackson and got we his had, own seat. Yeah, Jackson his own seat. And that kid did not make a peep on that flight. Oh, he, he was, was so good. Yeah, he was all about the process, all yeah. about this is what you do. And like, we didn't have to bring a lot of stuff for him. Yeah. Like, we didn't bring, we maybe had an iPad for him, but, you know, we didn't bring like the snackle boxes that all these moms these days are doing. We just set him up. They gave him a warm towel. And, they, and he, he thought was that like, was the oh. cat's meow. Yeah. Snacks were brought to him. And-, and some guy in first class said, he's like, oh, I didn't know there was a 
a kid on this flight. I didn't know yeah. there was a kid sitting in front of me. And we're like, yeah, the whole time he was he was here. Just I feel like someone it. else too said like I, my kids would have never like this would have never been yeah a thing. So, so he was easy. But then you flash forward and we talk a lot about, you know, Lila too. But I can remember a flight to California, which is not far for us. That's only a two hour flight. And I can remember her screaming the entire flight. There's a flight to California, but there's also a flight to Colorado I thought was a little rough. I don't remember Colorado. Yeah. Yeah. I can just remember the one coming back from California. She was sick. Yeah. And she was screaming. And I start this woman, bless her heart. I should find a photo of it because I still have it. This woman, she could see how much I was struggling. And she carries around cookies in her bag. And it said something like, you're doing a great job or something yeah. like that. And she handed me this cookie while I'm trying to, like, get Lila to stop crying and, like, just doing everything I could and in, in my power to, like, not make everyone mad at me around me. And she hands me this cookie and I just started crying. Yeah. I just started bawling. I'm like, oh, I can't believe this woman just did that. And so we've definitely It was had super like, sweet. It's those moments that are super sweet, but then he also acknowledges that. How rough it is. Yeah, it's rough and I'm rough. <laughs> like this is all rough. Okay. So it's also her basically passive aggressively saying, we hear it. Okay. And I think that <laughs> but you're that's, doing good. I think that's been one of the biggest things from having like traveling with kids. I just traveled with. Who did I? Where did I just go? Oh, by, I think I was by myself. It was on a flight to Boise. I flew mm. to Boise and this kid screamed the whole way, the whole yeah. way from Portland to Boise, which also is not a long flight. However, I, in my mind, I'm like, gosh, if that was my kid, my stress level would be through the roof. But I also then in that moment learned it's actually not that bad when it's not your kid. You yeah. really just don't care that much. Like I put my headphones in and was like, scream away, kid, get it out. Like yeah. whatever. And so I think that maybe that will help me on future flights if, you know, God forbid, our kids are screaming on a flight. A lot of times people really don't care. It's like you're the most stressed and yeah. you're the most aware of it. And everyone else is kind of like, dang, that sucks. <laughs> I feel know? like, too, if you're in the back of the plane, too. like, And if you're actively trying to do yeah. something. Right? Yes, yeah, so if you're actively trying to calm the child down. But also, like, for me, like, if I'm... If you're in the back of the plane, you're expected to be sit, you know, seating around families, yeah, or have families seated around you and things like that. Just it's a little bit more chaotic back there. So, what do you? I feel like I've seen this on reels a lot lately. What are your thoughts on these people who are like kids shouldn't be allowed to fly? Oh no, ridiculous! That's yeah. ridiculous. Kids shouldn't like no. Um, like people, I've seen people say like, well, I chose not to have kids. So uh, like, th- I just don't want to be around them on my flights to X, Y, and Z. No. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Uh, people that say that are just talking. They're just being weird. <laughs> yeah. No, I have no tolerance for that. There's no actual common sense in that. Um, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. I me. think that since having kids, I've had so much more compassion for traveling and like, I've gone out of my way and maybe this is not humble of me to say it, but like I've gone out of my way when I've seen a mom struggling or seen like I've done that baseball games where I've seen like moms that are juggling three kids and their kids are not happy and they're really struggling to like just get everyone to like relax. I'll like go out of my way to be like, you're doing so good. Like this is hard. This is rough. You're doing so good because that woman who gave me the cookie did it to me and it was like, Thank you. Like, thank you for acknowledging that I'm trying and this is difficult and, yeah, you know. Totally. Um, Yeah, traveling can be can be tough. It can also be a ton of fun when everything's clicking, Yeah, though, too. Like, when the kids are content, they're so excited. Like, little things like the window seat, you know, excites them. It can also be a very fun experience, too, when it's all rolling, you know what I'm saying? Something I never understood about my brother-in-law was... He was always like, I don't, I don't like to travel. Like when we would go on family vacation, they were always kind of like, oh, we'll drive or we'll do this or whatever. Like he didn't like to fly. And I never understood that. And we had two kids, at least at the time I had this conversation and I'm talking to him about like, you know, what, like, oh, we could do this. We could go here. We could do this, blah, blah, blah. And he was always like, no, I'm just going to stay home. And I can remember being like, that's like, why? Like, don't you want to travel? Don't you want to see the world? Now I'm like, oh, yeah. I don't want to fly. I don't yeah. want to try. I just okay. want to stay home. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah. it is stressful, you know, like yeah. it's stressful. I feel like you walk into the airport and TSA 
everyone's just mad. Everyone's just like, they're waiting for that next person to piss them off. And like, yeah, then you get on the flight and everyone's like, just don't touch me. Don't look at me. Don't do anything. Like it is stressful. I feel like traveling though is a thing of society though. We're so isolated in society, social media and technology and everything. And then, but flying is like old school. Like there's no technology that can separate us. You're still sitting next to someone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're, you got you. You have to go through these TSA lines. You're forced to interact with people. Forced to like. Yeah. You kind of have to. And act. like, not nice people all the time. Well, that's the. Those are people. Are like those are people. I don't know how those people even get through society. <laughs> how they even get to the process of buying a plane ticket? Yeah. No, honestly, because it's like we're all in this together. You yeah. know. But yeah, people have selfish needs and. They just are weird. In my opinion, that's weird. If you are saying I'm gonna go fly somewhere, you oh, are no, accepting. I guess I'm talking more about like the te- like the people who are putting you on the plane. Oh yeah, they can and and them. I know it's because they deal with people yeah. all day long. And but that's like I have seen more people. I've seen more friendly employees than not. Like yeah. they deal. I don't know. Though. I feel like you you have rose colored glasses though because you walk into a airport and people just kind of know who you are yeah like flying to boise like no one knows who i am and like fly you know going somewhere by myself without my family you do kind of see another side of like got it real life you know yeah, yeah. no one cares about you no one cares what you're doing no one like well that's stay not being rude that's not okay employees say stay out of your way i mean you're, you're so are you fl- i felt it i feel yeah. like you're flipping back and forth between employees and then people that are flying i, I, I think i'm talking about flying in general yeah. like the experience in general because i was gonna say are people being rude and mean or are they just not being overly friendly. joyous and friendly that's true. you know what i'm saying that's it's valid. just a median like yeah. when you do that sort of job every single day repetitive you deal with people that are super unreasonable things like that yeah. i don't blame those people I don't either. for just saying what they need to say oh, and yeah. then moving on with their yeah. day because it is like that. I see it all the time. You do not get paid enough to deal with this nonsense. Customer service. People are lying. Yeah. People are trying to deceive. People are trying to get more than what they paid for. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All that encompassing. And honestly, when I run into someone that does have a little bit, I'm very, yes, people might treat me a little better, but I feel like I always assume something terrible must have just happened. Yeah. Otherwise, like, there's That's no way true. could you actually have this job. And be treating every single customer like that. Yeah. So something just happened to you. Someone treated you poor. You know, I yeah. have to assume that. And for me, if I have to take a little bit of a hit. Totally. Of, you know, there's people that get so offended by like unprofessionalness. I'm like, stop it. Like. Well, and then they go after. And then it's like awkward for everyone in, around us. Yeah. Like, Well, there's an entitlement sometimes with is. customers and thinking they are I'm entitled right. to good. Always right. But also good treatment all the time. And it's like. As long as you get what you paid for, the the good treatment, in my opinion, is an extra thing. Yeah. Like, I don't know. That's yeah. how I look at it. That's such uh, a roll off thing to say. It's a me thing to say. <laughs> so, there's family members that get very offended if they're not. Oh, not, that's true. That's true. Yeah. That's true. So, anyway. Um, well, okay. Well, what would what would be our like best tips for traveling with kids? My my oh best tips. Mm-hmm. What we might disagree on this though. We might have my tip tips. is I always bring a backpack that's partially empty. Okay, oh, and this is actually gosh. can I say a pet peeve of sometimes when is we fly? Me? Yeah, it's, it's you. Me. Tori has all these loose ends. We get to the airplane on the on the stroller, <laughs> blankies that never get used. They'll just be tossed. All these loose toys everywhere, and th- you have three kids that need to be carried onto this plane. Or Jax can walk, but you know what I'm saying? Loose ends are the worst. So my bag, my backpack is always half empty. And by the time we get onto the plane, it is packed yeah, to the brim of other people's and, stuff. Yeah. But for me, it's like, what do you need on this flight? There's no room for extra luxury. Or what ifs? It's what if we might need this. What if this happens? We might need this obscure item that no one's ever seen before. You know what I'm saying? No. You, more hands-free, less bags, that's the way to go. Yeah. And you have to have a bag that's partially empty. So when the time comes, you're getting off that thing. You can just throw everything in there. Put one bag over your shoulders, two kids, two hands. You're off that plane, you know? I probably won't listen to any of that. I know. And it annoys me every time. <laughs> because, okay, now I'm going to rebuttal that, though. Because you say loose ends, blankies that never get touched, anything like that. 
I feel like I bring a lot of stuff on the flight that is like cleanup crew. Like I don't bring a blankie on the flight for them to cuddle with and, you know, be all cute with. No, I bring a blanket on the flight to sit them on. So when they have crumbs everywhere, it goes on to the blanket instead of everywhere else. When they have snot and goop and whatever coming out of their face, you just use that blanket. And that's just it's just one giant napkin mm. the whole flight. Yeah, yeah. I don't use That's it gross. for like, oh, let's like cuddle together and this is yeah. so cute. No, this is like a purpose. Like, Got it. And then I do agree with you. I tend to let the kids pick out stuff to bring with them, like put toys in their backpacks that they never play with. It looks they super adorable, though. It's super Instagram friendly. I watch these videos, these girl, like this mom saying, look what I we do to pack for this trip. Or get, I'm like, stop it. Your kids don't actually touch any well, of that. Well, their kids might. No. Our kids don't. They get on their iPad. Our kids don't get iPad, which we've usually, talked about usually. Yeah. So an iPad is a treat. Put So that I feel like would be our biggest tip. Hold on before yeah. we get ahead of ourselves. Yeah. I wouldn't say that we limit screen time. Our kids watch television. Our kids watch TV. Like that's reality in our house. And I'm not going to try to sugarcoat. What is my favorite quote is from Khloe Kardashian when she's like, you don't get an award because you watch less TV. And sometimes I feel like that's how moms feel is they're like, oh, my kids only watch like one show. And like, no, you don't get an award for that. Like our kids watch some television. However, they don't watch a ton of iPad. There's not a ton of like free reign just go in your bedroom play ipad it's like tv is like i need 20 minutes to clean the house you guys can watch octonauts or something you know yep so i do feel like that's a huge tip the more you can limit something like that the bigger treat it is once they're on an airplane yep so like or like a long drive or and so when our kids go on an airplane yeah. They get to like pick out movies to put on the iPad, yeah. pick out games to put on the iPad. And but this for theirs. me means we don't need all this extra stuff then because know, that's basically that's like what they're they going to be doing. Jackson and Lila are old enough now, though, that an iPad can occupy them. Josiah would not be occupied. He will, he'll watch 10 minutes and then want to go. Right. So him, he's, he's going diff- to be a... Yeah, he's a little bit of a different Because how long is the flight? It's like five it's hours. It's like five hours. It, that's going to be tough five hours with that child josiah is in a so tough crazy. age and everyone understands this he's too old to tolerate just napping in your arms oh, or yeah. whatever oh, he won't he's too old to tolerate all the noises to nap but he's too young to be occupied by like a movie for yeah. two hours or three and he's hours. too young to be like okay without taking a nap at least well and our kids i i don't know are we like jack josiah two years old is that normal for a two-year-old to not be occupied by a movie for two hours? Do you get what I'm saying, though? it depends though? on kids. Okay, I feel like all of our kids, Jackson wasn't really into movies mm-hmm. until we tried to get him into movies. They're the, into movies with, like, me when we, like, make it an evening thing. Well, I'm saying, like, Zootopia. Finally, he found a movie. Remember, we used oh, yeah. to, like, try to watch movies with him, and he, and he was, was like, interest. whatever. And yeah. then finally, Zootopia, yeah. at some age, she was like, oh, I can sit and watch this. Yeah. But then that's about that was only it. You know what yeah. I'm saying, right? But that's still kind. Of like I mean, that's a good thing, yeah. though, isn't it? Oh yes, I'm just wondering if that's a normal thing. I think or it totally if... depends because I think some kids, some kids at a, a year, will turn into complete zombies looking at a screen, and I think that that's more dangerous for parents to like monitor and yeah. and like we don't really feel it necessary to restrict te- television time because there's also times when it's nice outside. And Jackson asks to watch something. 30 minutes later, he turns the TV off and goes outside. So yeah. there's not like a... And when we ask him, to, when we ask any of our kids to turn off the TV, there's no argument. There's no. no like rebuttal against it. Where if your kid did have issues with listening about going outside or turning the television off, that would be yeah. more cause to limit screen time, yep. in my opinion. Yep, yep, yep. I feel like this conversation is going more into screen time I know. than travel. I know. But, but it, it's like... but. I mean, the point being is we don't do a ton of screen time. So when we go on trips like this, yeah. screen time is kind of a big deal. So by limiting your screen time, though, and then when you do maybe have a big trip, it the benefits come in yeah. real quick because and I think, it's I think, such a special thing. I think that's like the, you know, 
parenting is hard parenting you actually have to work at parenting and we're not perfect parents by any means and we're not experts by any means but that's one of those scenarios that like yeah sometimes it is hard to not just be like go grab an ipad and leave me alone for an hour that is sometimes very difficult not to do that but if your kid needs to be stimulated by other things that's where parenting is hard because it's like you can't punish your kid for something that you need to like be better with you well know? i feel like you and i like not struggle but like there's also moments we catch ourselves we'll tell them no tv no ipads but then you and i are on our oh, phones yeah. mm-hmm. and then it's like are we not being so they can't stimulate themselves by just playing with their toys or yeah. whatever it is are we not able to be stimulated right. just by watching them or like is our phones so phones are so i think phones not for kids necessarily it, phones for adults and young parents parents with young kids is more damaging totally. than what it's screen time for the kids do you get what i'm saying yeah. oh, our need to be on our phone like not our need necessarily but like our adults needs like our young yeah. parents needs to be on the phone social media screen time and then we get frustrated with our kids when they interrupt that yeah. zoning out period you know what i'm saying and then we're actually lashing oh, out because you. we just want to zone out yeah. And it's or is that that's not the time to zone out. It's the middle of the day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, well, and that's anyway. what, that was one of the things. I mean, we really are going on social media now. Yeah. But like, I feel like that was one of the things. There were certain people in my life who would talk about like letting their kids watch movies and do this, not the other thing. And I'm like, I don't see the harshness or I don't th- see the, I don't know, like detriment to like letting your kids watch television before they go to bed. Like the mm-hmm. last 30 minutes, like watching an episode just to wind down and go to bed. Because what do we do We're on our phones before we go to bed? Yeah. We scroll. We sit for 30 minutes and we catch up on the news. We catch up on what our friends are doing. We catch up on social media. What's the difference? Like what's the difference in letting your kids watch watch something before they go to bed? Totally. Is that healthy though for us to be doing it though? Probably not. Like that's the thing. Like it works your for blue us. Eyes gla- your blue light glasses on? Or- yeah. That's the thing. Like is that... And there's certain movies, like some. It depends them, on what movies you're watching. Yeah, you can't be watching this action packed Star Wars yeah. or whatever, like, because then they're just like, at least Jackson will be like, whoa, yeah. I'm, let's go to war. <laughs> okay, like, he's not going to go to bed, you know? Yeah, 100%. So it also depends, but. But I think that, I think another, I'm not very good at this for traveling, but I've seen other girls and other moms who've done it, they look. They do all these cute little snackle boxes where they have all these compartments that they put all these different kind of snacks in. And we just show up to the airport. I take them into the, you know, little Minute Mart things that they have there. And I go, just pick something. Pick yeah. pick some snacks. Always have snacks with you on yeah. on the plane and try to get a window seat. Totally. And, well, and sometimes, though, yeah, for me, it's just if you're picking extra stuff, I have no tolerance. This is a five-hour flight we're in survival mode okay Mm -hmm. like or whatever hour flight it is even if it's an hour flight to boise or whatever it's survival mode it's so there's no i know and other moms there's no room for me to be in for us to be indulging in our what looks good yes (laughs) cuteness and what feels good and what looks right and Oh, we make sure all the other moms look how put together we no, oh, there's yeah. no room for that. Oh, the minute so much we're room the for that. thought process needs to be once this flight is on, once we're on this flight, the door shuts and the kids lose their minds. That is what we're thinking about. What do we need in yeah. that moment? Okay. What do we need to save everyone around? When us? it's survival mode, like when backs are against the wall, that's how we approach this. That's how oh, I approach man. for everyone listening, that's how I approach a lot of things. Yeah. I could care less. I'm going to say my coaching analogy, okay? This is okay. really off topic. Coaching analogy. All these coaches have these fancy little philosophies and everything. Fancy this, fancy that. The minute the whistle blows, the other team scores a goal and they start losing, all that goes out the window. Yeah. So you just wasted an hour and a half of everyone's time telling us what philosophy you're going to do, this and that. Just listening to yourself talk. All that's irrelevant. How are you going to react? How are you going to feel when your team starts losing? That's your philosophy before the game. Yeah. No one cares what, what you think. I don't care what you think, feel, or whatever. Everyone feels differently. Yeah. What are you going to do? When you're on that plane yes. and your kid's losing their mind because so, yes. you didn't bring the right color Skittles, what, do you, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What actually matters when you're losing? Yeah. When you're losing and things are hard, that's everything else is irrelevant. Yeah. Ah. But 
Another tip I would say too about flying with kids is, and this kind of goes back into with like talking and interacting with other people that are traveling, but always be kind to the people around you. Oh yeah. Like always just be, give grace, like the attendants that are there, have patience. Everyone is there. It's a stressful environment already and just go into it with like everyone else is stressed. It's not like this isn't about you. Everyone else is like feeling the same feels and you know, uh, I've, I've always thought like killing people with kindness. If you're kind to the flight attendants, if you're kind to the people that are around you, oh yeah, they're going to be a lot more accepting and helpful. That's what, in my defense earlier in the conversation, yes, I do feel like we've talked about this on the podcast. I have to assume people know who I am or celebrity or whatever else, or honestly, I'm just a person with dwarfism. They're going to treat me differently anyway. Uh, but I also, I am a very passive person and I definitely, I'm okay with almost anything. Mm-hmm. Don't have ginger ale. Don't care. Yeah. Like, don't, okay, a little rude. It's all good. Like for me, it there's not a lot to get upset about. And as long as I'm on the flight, got my tickets, you know, if you're, I don't have an expectation for you to treat me a certain way. As long as I'm getting like maybe like what I'm paid for, yeah, you know, or what getting I'm getting from point A to B, without, yeah, like, like if someone yeah. needs to do a power trip, you know, that sucks for them. Like they're struggling with something, yeah. you know. And Let them honestly, have it. like, I have no ego to like mm-hmm. need to. Oh, I need to show them. Mm-hmm. Like, there's just none. There's, I don't know. For me, it's always very like so. Yes, kindness. To your point, treating people with kindness, and I'm always a big one when you're traveling. You know, there needs to be more people in society that take ownership and help lead that group. So, you know, there's a lot yeah. of some dads. I've said this before. Some dads, for example, will say, like, I only care about my family mm-hmm. and my house. You know what I'm saying? And then they'll they'll get into a dispute with their neighbor. Taking care of your house and your family, but getting into dispute with your neighbor is a, is a contradiction in mm-hmm. my mind. You know yeah. what I'm saying? If you are not making the people around your family and the situation around your family yeah. safe and secure and comfortable and not toxic or hostile. You're, you know, that's, you're just saying that to sound tough or whatever else right. you're, you're spooting off something that someone else told you. You get my point yeah, though. Oh, if you can't in that moment, when you know, my neighbors are all great. This is yeah, not, yeah. This is not none our of our neighbors. Yeah. Okay. But if I had a neighbor say something to me in that moment, all I thought about was I'm going to, show this guy who's tougher yeah i'm actually nothing in my head is thinking about my family yeah. i'm thinking about my ego your and how he perceives risk. me you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and a lot of, so anyway put yourself on an airplane yeah honestly if someone's acting a little like i try to help the situation be a leader in the situation within society because yeah. that will honestly help i don't want to put my kids in a toxic hostile environment for five hours on a flight when the guy next to us is a jerk you know yeah. what i'm saying so it's like it's it's one of those things where it's like help the situation yeah. a little bit and that will actually help my family help us all be safe. You get help my point though. You. It not enough vibes, dudes it helps do that. The aesthetic it helps everything. Yeah. Like dudes, just... not just dudes, not enough moms. Everyone like everyone. I feel like sometimes no one thinks about it like that. Like yes, by helping and leading these little situ- yeah. at the grocery store like. Mm-hmm. Or when there's confusion, whenever there's confusion or things, we can say, oh, this store doesn't have enough signs or which way. Like, take ownership. Say, hey, guys, I think here's the line. And and then people that don't want to follow that or try to get ahead, they think they're getting ahead in life because they're cutting the line. You're just small potatoes, small brain. You know, like, I do (laughs) think that. I do think that. Like, I get it in business and big boy stuff. There might be some... You might, to get ahead in life, you might have to be a little harsh and rash. Yeah. But there's certain situations in life, like cutting the line in the grocery store, you're not getting ahead of anyone. You're just yeah. a jerk. You're, like, yeah. But again, it's like, I'm not going to dispute you because that's your problem. Something's wrong in your head. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, turn the other cheek, honestly. Right. Honestly, sometimes too, I think like, all right, if I did get into this with this guy, like, you know, I don't know, this is going to look really dumb to him if yeah. he's yelling at some guy four feet tall right. so like right. yeah. <laughs> i don't know that's my rant for today no, i think that that's i think that's good though i i want to bring up a like basically our trip from you know where help me out the one that our bags got lost oh yes 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 so we were flying did we have Sai or i was pregnant i was pregnant where was our location again atlanta 
I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember. Anyway, was Atlanta I know our for final sure destination? Had... Yes, because we stopped in Alabama. No, no, no. This was to Williamsburg. <gasps> I was pregnant. Yes. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Okay. That, sorry, you're right. It wasn't Atlanta. It was Williamsburg. We were going to Williamsburg, and I, we were there. We were going for, like, a job, and we had our two kids with us. Lila yeah. was two. Maybe. Two at the time. Yeah. Jackson was four. Yeah. Five, maybe. Four, yeah. Five. Anyway, whatever it was. We we were flying to Williamsburg. I don't remember them. We were supposed to have a layover in Atlanta. Maybe that was it, yeah. So we were supposed to have a layover in Atlanta, but there was weather, and so they couldn't land the plane we had to be diverted to alabama like because they were gonna yeah. run out of gas yeah. so we landed in alabama got gas and then flew back to no, 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 no. we had to spend the night in alabama I well, thought. no but i thought we they got us to atlanta and then we missed our layover and so then uh, there were no uh, other flights we had uh, to spend the night in atlanta Okay, okay. I'm pretty sure it was okay. Atlanta. Got it. Alabama, I would have been like, oh, this is this is kind of fun. Like, yeah. but Alabama, Atlanta, I'm like, oh my gosh, just get me to a hotel room and get me out of here. Sorry, was that rude? But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, well, I think it was the experience that we had, though, in this airport was terrible. Like, yeah. trying to get a, a, a different flight, trying to get a hotel. We had to wait for like three hours. I remember taking Lila and Jackson to go get something to eat and I left them. I turned my back for two seconds and Lila fell off of her chair in the middle of this cafeteria and slammed her head into the ground. Yeah. And so I'm thinking like, oh my gosh, we're going to the emergency room now also on top of this. And I was so stressed and I just like picked her up and started crying in the middle of this cafeteria. And then we didn't have any of our bags. Our bags made it to Williamsburg. And so we had to go spend the night somewhere and I don't do well when it's not clean or it was some hotel. But but also just like not no none of us had clean clothes. None of us. It yeah. was like, and then we had to be up at like three a.m. to get. Oh my gosh, that was a nightmare. Yeah, but we and, made it. And we, so I my like my tip for something like that yeah. is like expect the worst because I think that I had n- that was nowhere on my radar that that yeah. was going to happen, and now it is. And now if it happens again. I'm going to have a pair of undies in my backpack so I can at least change my underwear. Totally. And, you know, you got to be flexible. When you travel with kids, you have to be flexible and... and. Well, okay, so there, there it is. Like, this backpack that I have, what's in it? Is it a bunch of, you know, pointless stuff? Or when that situation happens, yeah. is it There's extra some, underwear for all the kids? Can you put in your backpack Yeah, me? diaper. I do it all the time. Every yeah. time we fly, I have an extra pair of underwear you know it that's just a basic and then for the kids because again when it is over with you know what i'm saying when it's it at the end of the matter. line what do you actually need yeah you know and that's yeah so i think that is a that's been a huge takeaway i think maybe that's why i've gotten more and more stressed with flying because now you know we fly in a couple of days here and all i can think about is okay so where are we gonna get stuck yeah. where are we gonna have a well injury and that's the issue yeah you don't want to think about all those worst scenarios you know me i can easily think about those worst scenarios and be totally okay be like oh here's, I can't. let me pack the worst scenario oh here You're it like only this. makes me a more insane yes. packer because yes. i'm like okay what if this scenario happens and we need this yeah. and <laughs> yep 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 so but oh oh, that's why you know we try to find direct flights too when we can yeah. I get it. There's maybe a different cost on some of that. Yeah. For us, we're like Alaska Airlines. So a lot of our flights to get places, we have to go up to Seattle yeah. first, you know, and that always stinks. That's when, in my mind, more stops, more chances more for chances delayed flights, lost luggage, yes. this and that. Um, Okay, also, I've learned to put an air tag in your luggage. Everyone should do this. Put oh, an yeah. air tag in your luggage and you just know it's with you. You know where it's at if it gets lost. Yeah, that's put a good tip. Put an air tag in your luggage. And I put them in my kids' backpacks. Like, just know we where also, everything is. We yeah. also load last, usually. Oh, yeah. Walk around with your kid until the yeah. last. Like, why do you have to be the first on an airplane? I never have understood that. Yeah, kids why, get on when first. When you have a physical seat... Why do you have to be the first on an airplane? I think they want overhead space. They want to put their bags overhead. Oh. And that, I think, but okay. anyway, send one parent on then. But the second parent, if there are two parents flying at the time, you know, like, I, yeah, I've seen kids get on last. first on the airplane. I'm like, that kid's going to sit there for 45 minutes yeah. before they even take off. You know, and that's just interesting to me. Like, for oh, me, no. we're last on the plane. We're, like, going up and down the elevator or the escalator yeah. until until it's, like, they're ready to close the door. That would be my pet peeve. 
as we delay, 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 we're the last ones on the plane. Uh, and then we finally sit down and then we sit on the tarmac for an hour. Another hour. And it's like, oh my gosh, I, I had all the strategy in the yeah. world here. And then it just didn't work out. Yeah. So, but yeah, people do that sometimes too. There are some, you know, super weird. And that's the thing. That. Sometimes kids got on the plane first. I've had to take Josiah off the plane. Remember that one time I put Josiah on? We're in the back of the plane. We landed and I put him on and I ran you out. You were like, I got to go. I went up 32 rows. And people rows. parted ways for you. People they parted like, ways. Okay, dude. And they heard it. They all heard Josiah screaming. I'm like, guys, I need to get off. I, and that's, I love those moments though. Society came together, they saw, saw the common get sense. That, everyone else wanted that kid off yeah. the airplane. One, one person was kind of in the way. And I, someone else told him to move like, hey, he's trying to get off. And like it was clearly I'm not trying to get ahead of anyone. I'm not trying to like dis- that's the problem. with People that do try to cut in line and deceive. Ruin it for the other you people. ruin the common sense in the world. Yeah. It's like, no, this is actually for the betterment of all of us. Yeah. Get the baby off. And honestly, adults, it doesn't matter about your feelings. Your feelings are irrelevant. Tighten up. Deal with it. Mm-hmm. The child doesn't know how to do that. He doesn't know how to regulate his motions. This and this and this. Let me get off the and plane. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the flight that they all came home with fevers. Yeah. And that and so it was just we were sitting there like, oh my gosh, this kid is sick. Like he needs off this well, plane. And you were like, yeah. I'm just gonna go for it. And I was in full support. I'm like, everyone it. supported it except for like one or two people were a little like again, just irrelevant people in my mind. You're not reading any of the situation. The rest of my family is still on the plane. Yeah. So it's, it's not, not like, like we're trying to. Off. It's not like we're all trying to like take advantage of this. Yeah, you know no. what I'm saying? It's like. I'm going to get this baby off, one, for his benefit, and also all your benefits, too. This could be, we're on the back of the plane. This This could be another 20 minutes. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm not looking forward to flying once. There was one mom that this grandpa or whatever just didn't see me or whatever, but, like, Charles, get out of his way. (laughs) Oh, oh, like, like, (laughs) can't you see he's getting a baby off? Like, it was, but he was just, he was, he didn't see me, but. Um, I, okay, do you remember, do you remember Terry? I won't say her last name. Um, you know Terry. Soccer. Yep, yep, yep. Terry. So Terry gave me some of the best advice when I was pregnant with Jackson, and I do feel like we have kept it. If you want to travel with your kids, travel day one. Right? If you want to travel with your kids. Travel day one. The minute that baby pops out, travel. Oh, yes, Go. yes, yes, yes. Put them in the car. Yes. Put it like get them used to their car seat, get them out there, get them in the world. Like if you want to travel, if that's something that's important to you, and it could very well not be, but if that is important to you and your family, day one. Yep, yep, I totally agree. Day one, we did it with Jackson. Like we've flown with all, like all three of our kids have. We'll see how Josiah does. His last flight was not fun. Yeah, but he's older now. It's been what a year, year and a half. So he's less stimulated by like iPads and all that, but he might be super stimulated by like the window seat. And he's, and... he's gotten more, he's more, yeah. not to say that he's a patient child because love him, he's not, but he is more aware of like, okay, if I just be patient for a second, yeah. mom and dad are going to help me. Where a baby, you can't, you can't, you can't talk to a baby and say like, yeah. oh, we're, we're getting there. Like, he likes you know. receiving things though. Like so, if he sees Jackson and Lila sitting in their seats with his tray, he's gonna want his tray, yeah. you know. And he's gonna be like, "I want to be a part of what's ever going on here. Yeah. I want to fit in." So like that could be another like if you know it's part of not Jackson and Lila's burden, but like if they're yeah. you know doing what they need to be doing, he's gonna want to do what they want to do. And totally. So anyway, flying with kids, flying, traveling in general. Yeah. Get out. Wish and do us it. luck. By the time yeah. you hear this. We'll, we'll know, but hopefully I know. it all goes well. <laughs> That's why the turnover on this podcast. I wish it was a little quicker. I know. So we could like give you the business. Yeah. <laughs> we could tell you what happened, what failed, what was good. Yeah. But I don't know. Traveling with kids is always, uh, you never know what you're going to get. It's always yeah. different. It's always, you know, it can be really fun. We've had some really fun family vacations and, and traveling with all of our kids can be really exciting and you know it's exciting to show your kids new places and take them to see new things and you know do it like, they probably won't remember any it. of it but pro- but we will <laughs> okay. i get that all the time and i'm like it's not but we will yeah. and they're and no, like jackson's it. at the age he's gonna be stoked for i just trip. hope we're able to travel later when they're older though I too yeah. i see some of our other friends that travel and their kids are all teenagers yeah. and that's a lot of fun so though too fun. like so i hope we're able to keep that standard yeah I think that we've also prioritized traveling a little bit more, you know, 
I mean, and we'll see what happens when our kids are older, but I like, I'm going to always be a proponent for like, let's skip school and go do a family vacation and travel and do new things with our kids. Because I feel like those are life moments. Well, I feel like you and I have also evolved between like, not just going to resorts or something like that, like hot weather and palm trees. Like maybe like let's let's go to Washington D.C. Let's go on yeah. a road trip. Let's go see the back country of America. 100%. You know what I'm saying? Not 100%. just that. Like it's not all like right, a, yeah. Let's it go. It could to, be educational. It's yeah, not just not just Disneyland, Hawaii, or something like that. Where it's like we'll still go to Disneyland. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you got my point. Nice weather. We and, could do a whole podcast on Disneyland if the people want it. Yeah, I'm just yeah, saying. We could. That's all amazing. the tips and tricks on all that. the tips and tricks. <laughs> but um, anyway, this has been fun though, and I'm I'm glad that. You know, we're we're gifted the opportunity to travel with our kids and hopefully we don't squander it. Hopefully yeah. it's a good time and we have fun and no one gets no one falls in the middle of a cafeteria or it all goes well. So a couple of the tips. Restrict iPad time. Lead if you, at least leading up to the trip. Yeah. Because oh, then true. they'll that's, make him yeah. the day of the trip that you know I get the iPad. Yes, it'll be a good thing for you. Uh, have a bag half empty for yeah. all those loose ends, okay? With undies. Yeah, with undies, okay, <laughs> for everyone. Three, you know, be patient, be kind. And if you're able to lead, help lead situations, mm-hmm. that makes it better for everyone. That makes traveling better. That makes the airport experience. Even if someone's being a jerk or whatever, in my opinion. Kill them with kindness. Help, help the situation when you can, mm-hmm. you know, and that helps everyone. And that doesn't make traveling as stressful for everyone. Yeah. Do we have a fourth one in there? Travel from day one. Oh, yeah. And travel from day one if you can. Even if it's little trips. Even if it's like, yeah. Road even trips. If it's, like, I would put our kids in the car because I just needed to, like, drive around. Yeah. Just put them in the car. Just and when drive. we say travel, too, we don't mean, like, again, go to somewhere expensive. Yeah, no, you can go to go to the beach or go, go to the yeah. lake or... Or go up the road. Like, yeah. again, I would put I would grab coffee and just drive around the backwoods of Hillsboro. Yeah. And that yeah. was, like, traveling. Love it. Love it. So, all right. Thanks, well, everyone. send us your guys' tips. I feel like it would be really fun to hear what you guys like to do with your kids and how you travel with all of your families. And, yeah, maybe give us some funny stories of what's happened to you while you've traveled. Awesome. Yeah. Well. Well, make sure you like and subscribe everywhere you listen to podcasts. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, YouTube, all the things. Thank you guys for being here. Do your best. Forget, forget the, the rest. rest.